But as you heard downstairs, there's a map layer and we'll show you that. Inside the map layer, much like a doctor would take care of a patient or a group of doctors would take care of a patient, there's case management. In this case, it's managing the case to closure as fast as we possibly can. You heard the case example about the, the bulletin and the expediency of getting the bulletin out. For all the officers to have situational awareness in as real time as possible, and of course the burglary success story was there, and then of course the ability to blog information in real time with their zone partners uh, by area, and the chief often reminds us that we all have a piece of the puzzle, and we don't want to take that piece home. We want to leave it in the solution every day, so that way the next officers, detectives, corporals coming on shift, there's no information gap, which only benefits our victims because we're trying to solve crime faster to avoid the next crime from happening. So what had happened after we had gone through our journey on the focus on foreign crime reduction, we were using a monthly meeting process to try and have accountability and obtain new metrics in crime reduction. Well, that evolved about four years ago into a weekly crime meeting in each district. So we went from a month to a week, and that's the bridge of speed that we're trying to talk through. And what had happened for about the last four years is each district, I'll show you District 1 now, the analysts would produce a crime map on a weekly basis, which is still in existence as of a couple weeks ago. And every detective and every rock officer would talk about every single crime on that map as an opportunity to crowdsource a, a chance to, to solve that crime for the victim. And they were sharing information on a weekly basis. Not that they didn't share information on a daily basis, but this was a think tank on how to try and solve every crime that happened in the last seven days. And the same thing would happen in District 2 on a different day of the week. And the other districts would come and listen to their information and look for things that were happening between their borders. So we have the sharing of information by time and space and geography and shift and cycle. So all those things are happening in a great effort, like the chief said earlier, everybody's working very hard, but still things were going home with officers in their back pocket or in their head, and it was never left inside of a solution. So that evolves into our safe cop synthesis, which again is born of the processes of all the men and women that have been working so hard to reduce crime over the last nine years. This is a way for them to work smarter, communicate more efficiently, all to benefit the victim and potentially future victims of solving crime. So when an officer logs on to the solution, those four cornerstones we see are essentially up on the top. They can go to the map, and then they can zoom into whatever district they work in. So if, if Mr. Wolf will just click on one of the districts, you can see how it zooms right into their area. That's important because as you see when you drive around with them today, you know, they have to pay attention to driving too. It can't be all manipulating a computer. But so they can bring up and zoom right into their area. The chief talked about zooming even more. They can go down to the grid level, which we have 240 grids in the city, and those grids make zones and districts and sectors. So that if they want to zoom into a certain area, they have the ability to do that with just a click of a button. As they go to validate a crime, and what we mean by validation is if you get dispatched to a burglary, when you get there, you confirm it is a burglary. Because it's very important that our officers, detectives, analysts, everybody trying to solve a crime only spends time on those things that you know are going to make sense. Sometimes they're a civil matter. It's not necessarily a crime. Once it's validated, the officer can immediately put that crime on the map. Instead of the past, where we would wait seven days for the records management cycle to process the crime, the analyst would take it, harvest it, put it on a map, and then we'd have a meeting about it. And seven days is fast in the world of crime fighting. But if you can do that in real time, moment by moment, Essentially, we're having a meeting every minute, virtually, by in this in-car fusion. So as Mr. Wolf just showed you, he brought up a few validated offenses, and the icons can, can demonstrate what type of crime we're looking at. Each officer then can go and dive into that crime through a link. I think your blocker is on. And as that officer dives into that crime, so if one officer originates the offense and then his or her shift partner comes in on the next shift or if they're on their days off, and there's no lag of information. They can actually go into that offense and as they go in, they can blog together 
much like they would be doing a phone call, <coughs> except everybody gets to see it. So if there's a known offender that they're looking at, or if they haven't done a neighborhood survey yet, two things happen here. One, they're sharing information, and secondly, more efficiently, they're avoiding redundancies. Because if I didn't leave a note saying I did this, then somebody may double that work, and it may not be necessary. So all that adds to efficiency in crime fighting, which benefits the officers, the supervisors, the detectives, and the analysts, because now we're not wasting any valuable time because everybody knows what everybody has done. As you move to the blog category, as we talked about earlier, actually go into the list view, the blogs can be shown on the map so you can get geospatial understanding, or you can go into a list format. The officers can sort it, can sort it by district, sector, zone, or grid as small or as large as they want to see. And they can start looking for information. And I'll tell you from the words of Lieutenant O'Connor already, they're saying the common statement is they're filling this up. They're putting a lot of information <coughs> in here at a real fast pace. So we know by the energy of the officers that are now in the solution that it's working to our delight. Over here, there's key words that the officers can click on. Those key words can change sizes based on blogging energy, if you will. If, if an officer sees something that has value and the word is larger in this space, they can say that that's what's going on predominantly in their area, and they can click on that. They can look at blogs that have been recently updated, and of course they can generate their own blog at any given time and give it a geographical um, position inside the solution so other people can either zero in on it by geography or zoom out and have an understanding of what's going on citywide. Beyond this, they can make a bulletin, as we mentioned earlier. What will happen is you'll see the different types of bulletins. In the past, an officer would have to go hunt through his or her email and look for a bulletin that was sent out. And <coughs> as, as hard as everybody works, it's very difficult to go sorting through your email between all of the administrative messages that are in there as compared to all the crime fighting messages. Now all the crime bulletins are in one location. They don't have to hunt and peck for a bulletin. The beauty of this is they have ability to search the entire site in the upper right corner. So if anything at all was in there that they remembered from three months ago, they could type that word in there and would bring them to a list of possible matches. So they don't have to go and hunt and peck through their email and then not even have the ability to search their email for that bulletin. And a lot of times things happen very fast on the street. You heard the success story about the burglary being solved within a couple hours. The root of that success is the ability to take that picture off of the video and having the suspect still in the same exact clothing as what they saw in the burglary. That's the type of speed that we're talking about is information sharing speed because they were able to produce a bulletin right there during the investigation. In the past, what would happen is even the most diligent process, an officer would go to that scene, they would either try and download the video, and even the good ones may try, you know, the speedier ones would use a smartphone and take a picture, still have to send it through another process to get the bulletin made. That bulletin would come out by email, and then you'd have to sort through the email to see it there. Now by working in one common operating picture, which is the back end of the acronym, they can see everything in real time as it's made. So it, it's just a great opportunity for us to have crime fighting efficiency for the officers and the community and everybody out there doing the latent investigation and the analytical work. <coughs>